There's a really cool thing with a lot of JavaScript methods, and that is the fact that you can chain them together. So as an example, I'm going to build a custom object where I've built a custom object here, and I'm going to explain how this works and how you can chain things together so that you can build your own, or you can use other objects and methods that are designed in this way. So I have a custom object here just called my obj. It's a function, and what it does is it takes this dot name, so the instance that I'm talking about. Down here is where I'm calling my obj, and I'm doing it with new so that it returns an instance of this object, the my obj object for me. So this object is being returned. A copy of this object is being returned to me. I'm passing in the string bob, and that string bob is being set as the value for a property called name inside of this object. Now I've got this variable bob, and it is an instance of this object right here. So it has a property inside of it called name. I could create another one here. Let's say Cole, and I could pass in new my obj goal, and then that would be another one. So this one is going to have a property called name. This one's going to have a property called Cole. Now I have added to the prototype for this object. Basically what I'm saying is every single copy of my obj is going to have a function called capitalize, a function called upper, a function called get name. So we can open that up and you can see all I'm doing is console logging out this dot name. So let's try it. We'll do Bob get name and Cole get name. If I spell it correctly, there we are. And I run this, there we are, Bob Cole. So it worked. I created two variables, Bob and Cole. Each one of them is an instance of this my obj thing. I'm going to call get name. Okay. Now, this function is not returning anything. If I were to create a variable called x and then I console log out x, you'll see this is undefined. There it is, undefined. That's because functions in JavaScript by default will always return undefined unless you tell them to return something else. Here, I didn't return anything, but because I used the keyword new to call this function, that meant it returned this, the object itself. So it gave me an instance of that object. So this is one of the exceptions. If you're not using new to call a function, you're going to get back undefined unless you actually add the keyword return. Okay, why is that useful? It's useful because if you create other functions and you add the keyword return, you can return this. If I return this from a function, it means when I do something like this, bob dot capitalize. Okay, fine. I'm running the function capitalize. It does all this. It's sending me back a copy of Bob. So it's like I'm replacing all of this with just the variable Bob. I can then chain onto it another method. So this became Bob because I returned this. It runs, gives me back a copy of Bob. Bob.upper runs, sends me back a copy. So this is now Bob, this whole thing. I can then do dot get name on the end of all that. And if I run it, this is what I get. So I've taken Bob, I've capitalized the first letter inside of it, sent Bob back. Then I called upper. I converted the whole thing to uppercase, sent it back. And then I called get name which just writes it out. And that's what this is. So capitalize, we're kind of losing what that does because upper converts the whole thing to uppercase. But I could at the very bottom here say col dot capitalize and then dot get name. I don't have to use all of them. I'm just chaining together what I want. So there's Bob completely capitalized and Cole with the first letter capitalized. 
so capitalized, and this one does capitalize and upper. And the reason I'm able to chain them together is because the functions are returning a copy of the object that I was using inside of here. So this is the object that I'm working with. You can use this with any object that you create. So you can create methods that chain together so you can create these big long strings. It's a very powerful way to compose functions together to build a more powerful thing. There are built-in examples of this in JavaScript as well. Uh, one example that comes to mind is the array sort method. So if I were to create a new array right here, and I throw a few names into it, There we go, there's a bunch of names. I can now call sort on this method. Oh, sorry, the sort method on this array. So same as I've done here, what sort does is it changes the original array and it returns to me a copy of the array. So I could then call another method like for each. And let's just do the simple thing we'll just console log out each of these items inside there so this should write them out it should sort them and then call for each and write them all out oh i put a space in my arrow you probably noticed that before i did and there we are here are all the names sorted and written out in that order. So the array did the sort and then gave me back the array so I was able to call for each and write out each one of the items in the array in the sorted order. So that is a practical example of chaining things together that's built into JavaScript. And this is how you can create your own custom chaining of objects. So I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you found it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.